I'm Commander Shepard. 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 I'm Commander Shepard. And this is my favorite Mass Effect fan film. The digital video curriculum here at UAT is designed for students of all different disciplines. Uh, you know, all of our di various digital video disciplines, cinematography, uh, writing, directing, producing, uh, visual effects, modeling, animation, all of those, those different types of students to come together uh, sort of at the end of their, uh, their curriculum to, uh, to work together as a team to produce a very large visual effects driven project. In the past, we've done films like Fallout and Flight of the Melvin, which have done very well on uh, the film festival circuit. And in recent months, I've seen a, a number of fan films do really, really well on the internet. One that comes to mind is Portal No Escape, directed by Dan Trachtenberg. Now, you know, this film got onto every film blog, was talked about on every film podcast that I listened to, and was seen by some, you know, 7 million people on YouTube in the first couple of weeks that it was up there. So I said to my students, I think we could do a film just as good, if not better. Caleb Evans, uh, one of my 400 level students, he said, I love Mass Effect. I think we could do a really awesome Mass Effect fan film. We were throwing around different ideas, Bioshock, Half-Life, random stuff like that that was popular. And then I just kind of, it hit me. I'm like, Mass Effect, that's my favorite series. And then, you know, my director of photography, Jace, he was like, yes, I want to do it. Like, yes, absolutely. Oh, I was extremely excited. Uh, I love to do camera work and I'm actually a really big fan of Mass Effect Universe. Huge Mass Effect fan. <laughs> I've only played you know, the first game four or five times, second one about the same. Uh, two characters played through, uh, bought all the DLC. Yeah, I guess I'm sort of a Mass Effect fan. I was definitely excited when Caleb first told me about it. Uh, even when it was just talks initially, I was, I was on board with it. Because a, a project with the, everyone on the crew getting on something that big, it just, it just sounded like it would be a lot of fun. I played the games and I really like them. So I think it's a really awesome game to make a film about. I was pretty excited. I wasn't sure if we could pull it off at first, but as like things started coming together, it looked really, really cool. I thought it was a cool idea. I never played the game too much, so I didn't really know what to expect, but it turned out pretty cool, and I think we got something cool out of it. I was pretty excited. Uh, as soon as I heard we were doing this, I was like, you know, I, I kind of need to go play that, that game, though, because I'd never played it before. Um, but I was, I was excited to get uh, experience on a big set like this. I wasn't sure if we'd have the tools to make it look convincing, but then Caleb suggested we do a prequel. So he went and wrote a script uh, that is essentially a prequel to the Mass Effect game series. It's set 35 years before the events of the first game and kind of sets up the whole universe. Like They landed on Mars, they discovered ruins, then they found the mass relay. There was nothing in between, so I was like, hmm, they haven't discovered aliens yet, so we wouldn't have to make lots of CG aliens and stuff. We already knew we were going to kind of have a built-in fan base as far as Mass Effect fans were going to check this out. But then we said, you know what, let's get, let's get a little greedy here. Why don't we get a name actor or, or somebody who's at least got a little bit of marquee value in terms of uh, appealing to that fan base? One of the students in our class thought it would be interesting to try and contact Mark Muir, who is the actual voice actor in the video game, and see if he would be interested. We looked him up on IMDb Pro, found his contact information for his manager and his agent. And, you know, how cool would that be to get his voice in the movie? So I asked Paul if that was feasible, and he's like, yeah, I'll contact his agent and see what he wants. And they said, sure, you know, Mark would, would be more than willing to take a look at the script, send it. So we sent the script over, and within a few days, I got I got word from Mark that uh, yeah, I love the script. I'm in. What can I What can I do to help you guys? Before he even knew anything about our school, and he loved this. He's like, I'll do it. Let's do it. And then you know, we showed him Fallout and other projects we've done, and he was hooked. It was awesome. The previous work of uh, UAT that I that I watched the uh, the Fallout film was great, and I particularly enjoyed the effects in that, so I, I thought it would be a lot of fun. And so at that point, yeah, the whole project just kind of took off because we knew, all right, we got Commander Shepard's seal of approval on this. The experience was very fulfilling for me in a way, too. I loved being close with the actors, and I, I love just interacting with all of them because they're all so professional, and they're such great actors. They have great questions, and I love just seeing my story come together. Mark Muir is a consummate professional. There's a reason why he's 
the voice of Commander Shepard. There's a reason why he's a really successful voice actor, because the guy knows his instrument. He knows how to make his voice just sound so cool. Averos, we're going to need to evac now. He was asking if he wanted it to be his normal voice or Commander Shepard voice, which there's, there's not much of a difference. It's like pretty much his voice. It's like his normal voice, and then he just goes like an octave lower, maybe. Not like the red sand to run from a fight. Physically, he's not a superimposing guy. He's, you know, he's, he's kind of an average guy. Let's face it, I'm, I'm a voice actor. So I'm not necessarily the first person that you would cast as an action hero. And uh, the opportunity to do that was, uh, was great. You know, it was, it was something that I looked forward to. And then to add the physicality to it, which I think he had a blast with, because so often he's in a little, you know, soundproof booth with a microphone and he has to sort of imagine this. But to, I, I know he had a blast being in, in the armor and the helmet with the assault rifle running around, you know. His professionalism coupled with his overall geekiness. He's a geek like the rest of us. You know, he loves the Mass Effect stuff, he loves comic book stuff. It was a dream for us to have him on our set and in a way it was, I think it was kind of a dream for him to like actually be able to to, to put a performance like this on film. Yeah, he was a great guy to work with overall. I, uh, I couldn't have been happier with that. It was just great having him on campus. I mean, the, the, a lot of the, uh, the students here just really, they, re, they treated him like he was a rock star. I, uh, when I picked him up from the airport the first day he got here, I'm like, I just want to prepare you, you know. Like, when you walk on campus, it's uh, expect to be treated like a rock star. He's like, oh, stop. I'm like, no, you don't understand. You don't understand what this place is like. These guys are diehard gamers. He's huge in the gaming community, and everybody in our class was just like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and sure enough, every day when we were on lunch break. And we're all eating lunch, and people are just kind of like peeking around. And they're like, who's that? Oh, it's that guy. I've heard he's here. Mark, Mark, sign this for me. I just loved having him here. It was great. He loves his, his fandom. Well, I do have to say that it's great to be part of something like Mass Effect where the fans are so dedicated. I'm really hoping people will be able to see that I this is like a labor of love for the game for me. That's how I wrote it, because there's little little hints and nods at the game and mechanics in the game and little Easter eggs that you may find in the game that fans, if they pay attention, they'll be like, oh, okay, he actually knows his stuff.